Hey everybody, welcome to my weird kitchen where I cook things for my family and mostly myself because I love to eat. Um, so this is my second instructional video and what we're going to make today is spaghetti. Um, so making spaghetti from scratch is um, one of my favorite meals to make probably. My dad was very insistent when I was a kid that we only eat spaghetti made from scratch, ne never from a can. Um, so here are the ingredients you are going to need to make this. I have um, one pound of ground beef. I am only going to use half of this though. I'm not going to use the full pound, only half. I've got some uh, fresh rosemary and thyme from the front of my house. You don't have to use this. You could use dried if you wanted to. Um, I really like to use the fresh stuff. It's got a little bit better flavor. Um, we've got tomato paste. This is a six ounce can of tomato paste, eight ounce can of tomato sauce, and a, a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. Um, spaghetti noodles kidney beans, chili powder, crushed red pepper, also optional, celery seed, ground mustard, salt and pepper. Oh, and I knocked it all over. So when you're cooking spaghetti from scratch, I really like to use, I think um, probably in most of the things that I cook, the cast iron pan that I've got he right here in front of the camera. Um, the cast iron pan is super, super versatile. It, um, it does a really great job with almost everything that you're going to cook in the kitchen. And um, I especially like it for spaghetti. So as I'm starting out, um, I'm just going to do half, like I said, half of this ground beef, um, and uh, I'm putting that directly into the cast iron. Now there's a trick with the ground beef that you use for spaghetti. The first, first of all, um, when you cook ground beef, uh, you want to put a little bit of water in the pan. Um, so I'll just use some from the kettle. And not very much, just enough to cover the bottom. And this is gonna help the meat kind of um, loosen up and, um, you know, become more of the ground chunks that you want it to be, not so much, uh, you know, it'll stick together, all the fat will like stick together and you want it to really separate. So put a little bit of water in there that's my trick. I'm going to use a slotted spoon. You could use a wooden spoon or whatever. And you're just going to stir the meat up. Um, and I got this pan on medium. So that's going to start cooking. While the meat is starting to brown, and you really want it to brown. And, you know, one of the other things I like about this, the particular way that I do spaghetti, um, you know, when I was a kid, my dad would cut up onions, green peppers, we'd use a can of mushrooms, maybe a can of olives. Um, he'd do a little bit of wine. This is really simple. This is, now I'm gonna serve it with a side dish of either steamed veggies, like broccoli or cauliflower, or a fresh green salad um, as just a vegetable side. Uh, so otherwise it's just a lot of fat and starch, which is delicious, but not necessarily super good for you. Um, so while the meat is browning, like I said, I'm going to get a small little bowl. I'm going to get my fresh rosemary and thyme, and I'm going to separate all of the leaves, all of the tiny little leaves from the stem. Um, the stem, th this is going to allow so that I don't, again, I don't have to cut anything up for this. If you leave the leaves on the stem and you pick a sprig of rosemary or thyme that's got a really soft stem, you can eat it, you can include it, and um, 
you just need to, to chop it up really fine. Otherwise, it's going to have like a weird mouthfeel. Uh, so the thyme is super, super easy to get all those leaves off. Um, I just, I go about halfway down the stem, hold it tight with my left hand, run my right hand down, and all those leaves stripped off. Up closer to the top, there's not as many leaves, and that's a thinner piece of um, stem, and it tends to break when you try to do that. Um, so I'm really only getting about half of the leaves off of each you can spend the time and try to get every single leaf, but if you have a thyme plant or a rosemary plant, you probably have way more thyme and rosemary than you're ever, ever gonna eat in your whole life. The rosemary, a little bit harder to get off the stem, but it's got such a great smell. Fresh rosemary has such a great smell. Your hands are gonna smell like rosemary for days. Um, but the thing about uh, about these fresh herbs, too, is they're going to cook down. It's not going to look the way when you sprinkle in, like, oregano or thyme uh, into a dish and there's just, like, little flecks of green all over. This is going to, it's, it's going to give it a really nice look, a really nice feel. Um, so I've almost got that all the way done. Are my meat's starting to heat up. The pan's starting to heat up. Um, so you really want to keep, once the pan is heated with the meat, you really want to keep it moving. That's going to help the meat fibers break up um, and not be so uh, chunky. You'll have nice small pieces of, of the meat. So I stir it up, and you, you just want it to brown nice and brown and there's gonna you're gonna have two rounds of seasoning your first round of seasoning will be just the meat so right now we have just the ground meat in here I'm gonna do a couple of cranks of pepper about 10 or so cranks of pepper same with the salt some cranks of salt in there. The ground mustard. I'm not sure if it's open or not. Yep. Brand new ground mustard. And I'm just gonna. It's really like um maybe a quarter to a half of a teaspoon. That is not coming out very well, so I'm gonna live dangerously. About half a teaspoon of that. Same with the celery seed. Now celery seed has a really great flavor, but it can be super overpowering. So you really, just a little bit of celery seed, about a quarter of a teaspoon and then some chili powder and I'm probably going to do about a teaspoon or so of that chili powder. All right now we got the seasoning on the meat and it's really stirring up. It's starting to really get a good color. Um, it's separating nicely thanks to the liquid. You can break it up more with the spoon and so you put the seasonings on it, and, and that's going to ensure that the meat itself really has that flavor of the sauce. And now I have this big pot of water. And now that my meat is cooked, and I'm going to start adding the other things to my sauce, I'm also going to turn on the water. So my water is gonna start boiling. That means when the sauce is about halfway done, I'm gonna throw my noodles in. And my noodles and my sauce should get done around the same time. And then you can spend a couple minutes either add the sauce right on top of the noodles or people can dish it themselves. But while once that is, is done or while it's cooking and simmering, both of those things, you can do whatever side dish you're doing. Chop up some broccoli real fast, put it in the steamer or put it up in the microwave. 
cut, chop up a salad real fast, cucumber slices, easy peasy. Um, so, oh yeah, the meat is looking really good. There's some liquid in there. Because there's liquid in there, that can of diced tomatoes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to drain that most likely. Um, because I don't want too much liquid in my spaghetti sauce. So now, my pot of water is heating up. My meat is browned. This is kind of a tedious part where I'm going to be opening just a bunch of cans. We have the diced tomatoes. My cat's going to come running because he thinks I'm opening a can of cat food. Sad for him? I am not. Turns out cat food is not a very good ingredient in spaghetti. You know, if you really like it, all right. Whatever floats your boat. Um, okay, so the last thing I have is the tomato paste. When you do the tomato paste, go ahead and open both ends. So here the top is open. I'm going to put my finger, hold it, flip it over onto the counter. So it's still resting on the counter. And I'm going to open the bottom of it. This is the trick to getting all the tomato paste out. It's kind of tricky. Hold on. I have to show my cat that it's just tomatoes and he doesn't want it. See? Just tomato sauce. Super disappointed. So now I'm going to dump everything right into the skillet with the meat. The tomato paste, or excuse me, the tomato sauce. Kidney beans. That's why I only used half of the ground beef. If you wanted to do a full pound of ground beef um, and leave out the kidney beans, fine. Um, I did that because uh, I'm going to use that other half pound of ground beef tomorrow for burritos. So I'm just draining out the liquid from my tomatoes. I don't know if you saw that or if you just saw my dirty dishes. Um, then I'm going to dump the tomatoes right in. Now this is another reason I like to use the cast iron skillet because it's so deep. This is like two inch deep skillet and all of that is going to stay in there really nicely. Okay, here's the tomato paste. So the bottom's open, the top's open. I got my finger on the bottom. I'm going to push it down until the lid from the top is right here. I'll scrape whatever's left off the side. And now I can just push that paste all the way through. Pull the can up, get that other piece of metal off, and now, look at that tomato paste container. So nice and clean. So much easier than trying to get a spatula into that tiny can. Take the rest of the tomato paste off the lid, and now you'll just stir that up. And then all of those spices that you put on the meat, you're going to do that all again on the tomato sauce. And then you're also going to add in the thyme and the rosemary. If you wanted to add oregano or any other, you know, if you have like a pre-mixed Italian seasoning, that's fine. Um, again, I think the fresh herbs are way better. A lot of times, just walking around a neighborhood, um, you'll be able to see rosemary bushes at just out and about in in the neighborhood there's several in my neighborhood so if we didn't have our own rosemary bush you could probably go steal a couple sprigs off of your neighbors and that thyme and that rosemary it's gonna really give like a sweetness like an earthy sweetness to the spaghetti sauce that i really really like okay so that's pretty much it. Um, homemade spaghetti, super, super easy. Um, you can serve it with some garlic bread, a vegetable side. Um, you can use any kind of pasta you want. You do not have to just use the long spaghetti noodles. You could use penne pasta, 
the spirally pasta, whatever you want. Um, and it's super good, super good for you. Um, and that's about it. I don't know what it'll be next, but I'm sure it'll be just as delicious. And um, yeah, keep eating, keep eating weird.